talk to us a little bit about how ADHD can show up differently in boys and girls. Okay. Yeah, this is a good one. Uh, sometimes, you you know, I get asked this or with parents coming in for ADHD evaluations. I'm sure you've heard this too. Uh, typically, and I mean, this is like your usual, of course, everything doesn't always follow certain patterns, but a lot of times girls tend to not have as much hyperactivity and they're just mostly inattentive. And so they tend to go unnoticed for longer. Um, a mm. lot of girls come in later uh, to be diagnosed. Based maybe, on grades. Yeah, like they're struggling academically. Uh, and the parents are like, I don't know why, you know, and no one's really mentioned anything to them. Like the teachers haven't brought up any concerns uh, aside from, you know, their grades dropping or maybe they're even failing now. And the kids could have been struggling for years and years. And when you start to get into the story, you know, a lot of times they're like, yeah, like she's really had a hard time. We've had to do tutoring and all this extra stuff uh, over the last several years. And so it can be hard for the those children specifically because they've kind of dealt with it silently for so long. Uh, and so, you know, getting them an appropriate management plan can really like change their lives. Um, and then, you know, boys tend to be diagnosed sooner. Sometimes we see boys like in preschool age uh, because they're very, they tend to be a lot more hyperactive. So it's more common for boys to have that hyperactive component of ADHD. Uh, and so, of course, when you have behavior concerns, that's going to be brought up a lot sooner. Uh, teachers don't let that go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's understandable, and right? Parents. They're disruptive. Yeah. yeah, and parents. I mean, you know, it's more obvious. Uh, to ha- when It's you more disruptive. Them. Disruptive, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So when you have that, they tend to be diagnosed earlier uh, because – that disruption, you know, causes the parents to say, I need to figure out what's going on here and get some help. So that's probably the biggest difference that we see um, when they're typically brought in for evaluations uh, and then the differences with the type of symptoms. And, you know, boys can still have the inattentive type and girls can still be hyperactive too, but those are typically the patterns that you see um, boys being diagnosed earlier with a lot more hyperactivity and then the girls a little later inattentive. Uh, but yeah, if your child is struggling with any of those things, I would encourage you to get them evaluated. And, you know, maybe it is an ADHD, uh, but it's good to know. Yeah. yeah and, and I always say that, you know, girls are more, or females are more with it much earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, it's the, <laughs> even later, you know, no. it, it, <laughs> their whole lives. Put even like literature and, and uh, you know, papers and stuff aside. Just, you know, we have a lot of patients, and I know a lot of parents, and I have, and I've seen the stories at home. Girls typically are more uh, organized; they have a little bit more executive function. That part of their frontal lobe really develops much earlier than in in, in males. Um, so I think they that's why it gets missed. Because they can be organized, or they're always going to try a little harder, or they will they'll try to be more respectful in situations. I think with boys, that's something that they don't start thinking about until much later. So I think that that can be a big difference yeah. of why you we it's it can be missed. That's a good point. I think they're uh, just accommodating a little bit better for their symptoms, and so it it may not be as obvious with them. They're really making an effort Mm -hmm. to try to overcome their symptoms. Uh, And boys may not be making the same effort. (laughs) Yeah, maybe the boys complain a lot. You know, that's what it is, especially when they're younger. Yeah. So if you're you're the parent of a girl, is there some things you should be looking for, some questions that you could maybe ask her Mm -hmm. and like listen for a certain kind of answer that might say, "Uh, maybe we should get this looked at? Good question. Uh, Yeah, I think knowing what's happening with your children in school is important. Looking at their grades. If you start to notice declining academic performance uh, and there's really not a good explanation, I mean, then I think you definitely should start asking questions. You can look up the symptoms online of ADHD and kind of even go through the questions yourself and asking your child those symptoms. Like, are you feeling distracted? Do you forget things? Um, And it gives you a good sense of like, are, are, you know, are they struggling with these things? Sometimes the younger kids, it can be difficult for them to answer those type of questions. Um, but then yeah, older kids, especially older elementary age, they can 
answer the questions. Yeah, and and I don't think everything's ADHD. I think there is a lot of overdiagnosis of ADHD mm-hmm. um, because the parent comes in, they're saying these are the problems, and then there are a lot of people that like, hey, here's Adderall. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the right way. I think mm-hmm. understanding what's your perspective, why are you worried? Uh, talk to the parent, mm-hmm. um, and then sure they got to miss a list, meet a list of criteria, but then kind of figuring out like what else is going on. Um, I think coaching them on things that can be improved. Hyperactivity is okay. Like, or if they're hyperactive and they're in zero sports, why? Yeah, get them in sports. Like, use that activity for something. ADHD doesn't have to be something bad. I think there are a lot of components to you. Can, it can be broken down into so many things. Um, you know, maybe being inattentive in certain situations is good. Um, but when in school, I always tell my parents, I want to see the report card. Uh, one of my mentors, um, you know, when I was, you know, I'll say when I was, a when kid, I was younger, yeah, when I was younger, <laughs> younger, you know, when, if there's ever any school concerns, instead of sitting there talking about it for an hour, I want, what's the report card look like? If we're talking about, we're having a hard time in school and we're making all 95s and above, you know. Let's relax a little bit. Yeah. And I'll tell the parents that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I used to make all 98s, 99s, but now we got a 91, 92. It's every year there's more information. The quantity is higher. The complexity is higher. Um, and sure, maybe ADHD is there. Inattentiveness is there. But the quantity of information they can cope with. So until like each grade comes along, if you got like 90s going along and then all of a sudden you get into like 80s and 70s, Something happened, Mm -hmm. but don't just, it's not just ADHD. Like is home different? Are friends different? Um, Is something bothering the kid? Mm -hmm. Is there something that's not right? Go into all that first. And then maybe finally, like it is ADHD, inattentiveness, hyperactivity, um, and the complexity or quantity just became to the limit of their ability to like maintain executive function. So I think you got to get into like a little deeper dive. Yeah. And you can also always tell a lot from the parents too. Like if I brought my oldest in for an ADHD <laughs> eval and I'm sitting there, they're, pro- they're going to see the ADHD in me. Um, I think there's a lot of like overlap between how one of the parents are and how one of the kids are. Mm-hmm. And if you really kind of ask yourself, what was I like as a kid? If one of y'all are going to be like, hey, that was me when I was younger and I still made it. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of understanding it's okay. Um, not everything's ADHD, what's going on in life. And maybe we're at a grade level where the complexity is harder to where we need evaluation. Yeah. And then bring, bring a report card, bring proof of last year and this year. Cause that tells the evaluator a lot. And really in today's world of technology, like you can pull up your kid's report card oh, yeah. on your phone. I'm thinking about a piece yeah. of paper, like a little <laughs> strip of paper. <laughs> Have, I'm holding Remember it in my those? hand down here. They used to like mail them to your house and your oh, yeah. parents had to sign them and then send them oh, back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, now you can just pull it up on your That's phone true. and you can see grades in real time most of the time. So I think it makes it easier. Like even if you forget to bring the paper copy <laughs> to the doctor, you can just pull it up on your yeah, phone. Um, and But it makes it easy, right? And I think it is something to keep in the back of your mind. Like parents should be checking in on their child's grades like not a, you don't have to be compulsive about it and do it yeah, every day but look at the report card. um every once in a while look and especially if they start dropping off then maybe checking a little bit more often uh and then you brought up another good point um you know with checking to see if there's other things going on and this applies to boys and girls so mood disorders can commonly uh, mask themselves as like ADHD type symptoms. So a lot of kids with anxiety and depression, uh, it can seem like they have ADHD and especially like the inattentive type, they may be distracted, you know, forgetting things, um, not paying attention as well, but really it's because they're struggling with anxiety and depression. So talking to your kids about those things is important too. And then getting them help if that's something that they're struggling with, because a lot of times if you treat the anxiety, for example, academically, they're going to start improving. They're going to be paying better attention. Uh, so there could be other things going on. So that's a good point. Yeah. And if they're at a certain age where, you know, if you're as three year olds are a little bit hard, but even like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, ask your kid, what's hard, what's difficult for you at school. And they'll tell you mm-hmm. usually. And if they don't because they're scared that you're going to do something, 
Like my kids sometimes get scared to tell me things because I'll take action. I, if you tell me something, I'm going to make it better or try to. Mm -hmm. Making it to where it's safe. There, you don't always have to react to what they say. Let's just let them feel comfortable coming to you and talking about it. So I think no matter what age that is, making it to where you've had that conversation with them in a controlled setting where it's, they feel comfortable before going and taking them to a doctor. Have you had that conversation with each other? Mm. Uh, I think that's like a, like, a, like a parenting hack. Do I need to go to the doctor? Have I talked to my kid yet? If the answer is no, then you, know, you may get answers from the doctor that you don't need or want or may not be prepared for. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.